Hi everybody and welcome back to Love English. I'm Sabra. Today I have a video to help you with your formal or your academic English. So it's got lots of different purposes. As many of you know, I'm an academic English teacher at a university. So it's my job to help students pass their exams to get to university and to use lots of lovely academic phrases in their speaking or their writing. These are also formal English phrases, which you'll find very useful if you're in the workplace, in a business English meeting, or any situation really, which is slightly more formal. So hopefully these phrases are going to make you sound a little bit more intelligent. Before we get started with the video, I would like to say a thank you to our sponsor, Skillshare. On this platform, you can learn thousands of amazing new things. For example, you could learn about business, technology, design, filmmaking, writing. <gasps> Literally, it is endless. So I'm going to start using Skillshare myself to improve my Italian. But that's not the only thing I'd like to try on Skillshare. Today, I saw that I could learn how to make the perfect lemon meringue pie or how to be a better comedic writer. Of course, you can also improve your English with Skillshare. There are hundreds of English classes on prepositions, grammar, improve your writing, study for IELTS. It's also very, very affordable compared to other English classes, as it's less than $10 for an annual subscription. So really worth trying out, guys. Now, Skillshare have given our Love English followers an amazing offer. You can get two free months of premium Skillshare classes if you sign up using our link. It is only available for the first 200 people, so quick, 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 quick. If you want to sign up with Skillshare, guys, go down to the link in the description box. It's also here, but click that link down in the description box. Do it at the end of this video. Go and click that link and start improving your English now. I think tonight I might go and join that class about making the perfect lemon meringue pie. Right, let's get started with the video, everybody. So when I give you the phrase, I'm going to give you an example sentence and situations where you might use it. So the first group are all for giving your opinion or giving your ideas about something. So number one is from my perspective. From my perspective. You can say it with me, guys, as it's quite a difficult word to say. Perspective. From my perspective. This means, in my opinion, but it's more academic. From my perspective. Number two is from my viewpoint. From my viewpoint. Again, another more academic phrase, more academic than in my opinion or anything like that, or of course I think. In business meetings, if you say from my viewpoint, you sound a little bit more serious. You sound like you know what you're talking about. In an IELTS speaking, you're more likely to get a higher score for using phrases like from my viewpoint than I think or I believe. Number three is to my mind, to my mind. It's still useful, but it's less academic than from my perspective or from my viewpoint. This is more for business meetings, around the office, to my mind. To my mind, we should really try this new strategy. Or to my mind, we really need to cut the budget on this one. Number four, it could be argued. It could be argued. This is a great phrase for academic essays. So for any formal kind of essay writing, formal emails, it could also be used. It's a passive form. So we've said it could be argued. It's passive because you can see that we have the verb to be, but then we have the past participle. This is how we make the passive with modal verbs. Here, we're trying to be objective. The statement seems objective and not too personal because we put it in passive. We're not stressing who has said it. So it sounds more formal and more researched and less subjective, so less personal, by using the passive. Number five is very similar. It is, it could be said that. It could be said is not as strong as it could be argued. However, it could be said still shows the person's opinion, their view. If you put it in an essay introduction, for example, you might say, it could be said that plastic is a growing problem all around the world. Here, we can see that it's the author's opinion. Even though they're not saying, in my opinion, they're saying it could be said that. It's something that could be said. It's possible that we can say it. You can also use it in the workplace because if you want to be a bit more careful about giving your opinion, you could say, hmm, 
Well, it could be said that we do need to cut down a bit on the money for that project, or it could be said that the manager is sometimes a little bit difficult. This next group are all verb phrases, which have a similar meaning or a similar function to the verb show. However, show is a simple word and it's not always that useful in academic writing. So let's have a look at some of these more useful and more academic verbs. Number six, indicates that. Something indicates that. So this means something is signalling to. In a car, for example, when you indicate, you show that you want to go left or right. So when we use indicate, we're saying this is pointing towards. So let's have a look at an example sentence. The results of this survey indicate that the climate is getting warmer. The results from this survey indicate that the climate is getting warmer. Another useful verb for the office as well, you can say these figures indicate that we need to invest more money here or this person has indicated that she wants to do that project. It's a useful verb. Number seven is quite similar. It is something suggests that. So suggest can mean something is implying. It's a little bit like could in an academic context. Something suggests that. It's saying this is possible. The evidence is showing to a certain extent or to a degree this. So research or evidence suggests that. It's a useful verb as well in many formal situations. Number eight, to claim. To claim something. To claim means that something has been said but it hasn't necessarily been proved. So if you say someone has claimed that, this means that it hasn't necessarily been factually proved in any way. It's just their opinion. You can use this to talk about what other people say, or you can use it to talk about a source. For example, in an academic essay, you could say someone has claimed this. Let's look at an example sentence. Smith has claimed that by the year 2050, we'll be using holograms and not computers. Number nine, points towards. Very similar to indicate. Suggests, things like that. Something points towards, meaning it literally is pointing towards that. Let me give you an example sentence. The evidence points towards Layla as the thief of the missing chocolate cake. Number 10 onwards. This group of phrases is all about looking at the different sides of an issue or a problem and using phrases to describe the fact that a situation is not simple. Number 10. Number 10 is it's a complex issue. It's a complex issue. This means it's a complicated issue. It's not simple. So this is a great phrase to use if you want to say that something is complicated. You can say, well, the issue of whether we should ban smoking internationally is a complex issue. People have lots of different opinions about it. Number 11 is it's a controversial issue. Here we are talking about the fact that the issue causes argument or lots of very different opinions. It's an issue which causes people perhaps even to get angry. So controversial issues can be abortion, euthanasia, immigration, taxes. It's a useful phrase to use if the issue is controversial. Number 12, there are benefits and drawbacks there are benefits and drawbacks. This is an upgrade or the more advanced version of there are pros and cons and there are advantages and disadvantages. There are benefits and drawbacks. You're, you're saying the same, but it just sounds a little bit more academic. Number 13, I'm gonna give you a replacement phrase to every coin has two sides, on the other hand, things like that. You can say there are several perspectives on this issue or there are many perspectives on this issue Either is fine, but you're showing that there are different opinions, and again, it's not a simple issue. So the next couple of phrases I have for you are all phrases which are when we want to say more about something. So we can use words like moreover, furthermore, in addition. Of course, they're very, very useful, but you can also use a phrase, and this makes you stand out from the crowd a little bit. It's a little bit more unusual than saying moreover. Anyone can learn more over. These phrases show that you can use the language in a bit more of an advanced way. Number 14, to develop this point further. To develop this point further. I'm saying I want to develop this point. You know, I want to keep going at this point. Number 15, to expand on this point. Even better, I would say this phrase, to expand on this point. I'm going to expand the point I've been talking about, meaning I'm going to say more about it. Expand means to make something bigger. Number 16, 
something has illuminated something. Illuminated means that light has been put on this thing. So this thing has been lit. So it's become clearer usually. So for example, the evidence has illuminated the depth of the problem. The evidence has illuminated the depth of the problem. It means it's really brought it to attention. It's become much, much clearer. Something has illuminated something. Really, really lovely formal or academic verb. Number 17, you could also use something has shed light on. So we can actually use the more literal version of this. Something has shed light on this. This new research in the scientific field of breast cancer has shed light on the causes. Number 18, we're nearly there guys, only three to go. So stay with me, we're nearly at the end. Something has demonstrated. Something has demonstrated. Demonstrated means shown, very clearly shown, so it's not a weak verb. For example, you could say, the public survey has demonstrated the need for new leadership. So it's shown it, it's demonstrated. To demonstrate is to show before your eyes. So these last verbs, these are concluding phrases. So they're phrases when we want to bring a meeting to a close, or we want to bring an essay, or an email, or anything like that. In a formal way, we want to bring it to a close. Number 19, slightly simple but very useful, to sum up or to summarise. To sum up or to summarise. They literally mean, I'm summarising, I'm putting my main points together, this is coming to the end. To sum up or to summarise. Number 20, a little bit of a more academic phrase. To bring or to draw this to a conclusion. To bring or to draw this to a conclusion. So you could say, in an office environment, let's bring this meeting to a conclusion. You could also use it in an essay to bring this to a conclusion. So now guys, I'm gonna bring this video to a conclusion. So guys, I hope this video was useful and that these phrases are going to be something you can use in an academic situation or in a work environment. Please leave me a comment and try to use them in a sentence or tell me where are you going to use them? Are you going to use them at work? Are you going to use them at university? Also, if you know any other academic phrases or any other formal phrases, do you please comment below and share them with me and share them with the other learners that are watching this channel. Don't forget about that amazing offer on Skillshare, two free months of premium membership, so learning lots of amazing new things. Go and click that link in the description box below and start improving your English or learning some amazing new skill. The world is your oyster. Don't forget guys to subscribe to Love English. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share it with your friends. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter for more Love English fun. Thank you so much for watching everybody. See you next time. Bye bye.